This looks like the world famous Xiaomi M365, but it's not. What it is, is the worst electric scooter we've ever tested, the MacWheel MX Pro. No matter what scooter you're interested in, we'll show you six deal-breaking flaws to watch out for. Also, one performance test where the MX Pro somehow beat every scooter we've tested, and a feature we found hidden that we wish all scooters had. And you'd think that making a knockoff would be pretty straightforward, but the MacWheel MX Pro has basically failed in every way except one. Later, we'll show you three similarly priced scooters that we think are better alternatives to the MX Pro or the M365. You know that sound when you realize you've grabbed the worst cart at the grocery store. The MacWheel MX Pro made that sound non-stop and did it right out of the box. You can fix the sound by tightening the stem latch, but it'll come back because even though there's a locking screw, every time you open or close the latch, it turns the head of the adjuster bolt. When we unboxed the scooter, the only thing keeping the stem from folding while riding was this little guy right here. So if you hear this sound, it's telling you to stop and adjust your latch immediately. Unlike the air-filled tires on the M365, the MX Pro's 8.5 inch diameter tires are solid rubber. So the plus side is you'll never get a flat tire, but they have an unforgivable flaw and that's tire wear. After just five hard stops, the rear tire developed flat spots from skidding, causing noticeable vibration when riding. Once you've got flat spots, they never go away. One of the quirks of the original M365 was incredibly simple display. Four dots let you know how much battery you have left and if you're in eco mode. At first glance, the MacWheel Pro's display seems like a step up. It's got battery level, speedometer, headlight, and mode indicators, but then you take it outside and it's completely unreadable, even in the shade. On the plus side, cable routing works well and it's not a bad looking scooter. It comes with an app which lets you set the riding mode, turn on the headlights, lock the scooter, and toggle between miles and kilometers, and switch cruise control on or off. The app also has a navigation function consisting of a route map, but no turn-by-turn -turn instructions. We found one shockingly advanced feature hidden deep within the app. It'll estimate the scooter's remaining range based on rider weight. If I enter my rider weight, including the nine pounds of gear I wear, the number it comes up with matches the ESG range test results to within a tenth of a mile. Every scooter should have this feature. If you'd like to ride without pulling out your phone, here are the functions you can access with just the main power button, including a couple functions that aren't documented in the manual. Like all M365 clones, portability is good. The handlebars don't fold, but it's otherwise light, easy to fold, and compact. The MX Pro has the worst ride quality of any scooter we've tested, and there are three main reasons. Number one is tires. After testing close to 100 scooters, we're used to the trade-offs. Air-filled tires have a smoother ride, but can get flats. Solid tires don't get flats, but have a bumpy ride. The solid tires on the MX Pro are next level awful though. Your vision literally goes blurry riding it on moderately bumpy pavement. Next, it has the third shortest handlebar height of any scooter we've tested. At 36.5 inches above the deck, the bars are more than three and a half inches lower than the ones on the 9Bot Max, making the MX Pro awkward to ride and downright uncomfortable after 10 miles. Then, taking the last spark of joy out of the ride, there's a significant throttle lag at higher speeds. It can take as long as five seconds to reach full throttle again if you let off. There is one thing the MX Pro does better than any other scooter we've tested, and that's coming up in the next section, performance. The MX Pro's tested top speed is 15.4 miles per hour or 25 kilometers per hour, the same speed as the M365 and many other scooters of this size. Range is where things get weird. With a real world tested range of 19.6 miles and an MSRP of just $429, the MacWheel Pro has the best range per dollar of any scooter we've ever tested. It's not just the best in class, but best overall. This is due to a combination of low rolling resistance, low top speed, and a relatively large battery for the price. The MX Pro's acceleration and hill climb speeds are both on the slow side, but not far behind its peers, with a 0 to 15 time of 7.7 .7 seconds and an average speed of 6 miles per hour up our 10% grade test hill. Then things get weird again. The MX Pro scored the second worst braking distance we've ever recorded, taking 23.5 feet to stop from 15 miles per hour. This is partially due to the awful tires, but also because it just has a single disc brake at the rear and no regenerative braking at all. Anything more than a mild application of brakes sends the scooter into a skid and often kicking it out sideways. Safety-wise, the lighting is typical, a high-mounted headlight, 
fender mounted tail light that blinks when the brakes are applied, and it has the standard side reflectors front and rear. However, considering the janky stem latch, poor braking performance, and low overall traction, the Macro Pro gets a D minus for safety. Pros include best range per dollar we've ever tested, and it's cheap. Cons include worst ride quality ever, poor braking performance, unsafe and rattling stem latch, and unreadable display. You really have to be careful when buying inexpensive scooters, but there are some very good ones out there if you know where to look. Okai Neon, great hill climber and a clean design from a high quality manufacturer. High Boy S2, better flat free tires plus rear suspension and higher top speed, but only six month battery warranty. New KQI2 Pro, outstanding braking, ride and build quality plus a two year warranty. Make sure to use our links in the description for the best discounts. The Mac Wheel Pro is really not a scooter I would ride for fun, but if you absolutely had to cover 19 miles on one charge and had a budget around $400, the MX Pro might literally be the only choice. But given any other set of circumstances, it would be our last choice and marginally more fun than walking. We put a lot of work into everything we do. If you like what we're making and want to support us, please like this video and subscribe. Before you go, check out these two reviews of scooters that don't suck, including the new KQI2 Pro, our latest review which basically blew us away in design and quality. Or check out this video.